Welcome back, Controls Champions. I'm your host, John, and today we're going to talk about data tracking on conveyors. Let's jump in. So before we start talking about how this is going to work, obviously, as always, I've got a little visualization here to talk through and we'll do some programming. What kind of data do we actually track on conveyors? This is something that tends to follow apart from one conveyor to the next conveyor. So as the part goes through, we want to keep track of that parts data. And in this case, it's going to be pass fail data. We're pretending that there's some kind of test here at station two, but this could also track part numbers, assembly information, destinations, etc. I will say that if you're thinking you want to track a lot of part data, that's probably something best left for an MES system or something like that. We don't want to track a ton of data in the PLC, but tracking some data is often very useful and sometimes a requirement. So where does the data come from? In this case, it's coming from buttons. We're pretending that there are physical buttons an operator is going to press. There could also be some kind of test system connected to our PLC that, that has the same signals, pass and fail, so discrete signals. Or this could come through an MES system or something else. Now, since we don't have real boxes and conveyors to look at, I have made this little simulation where I can click and add a box at the beginning or end or wherever. I want to point out that this box here, this is a representation of a physical thing, not of what the PLC knows or is aware of. So just, just for the sake of clarity, seeing this box here, that's part of the simulation, not part of the PLC code. What is connected to the PLC is this little sensor, and that's how a PLC would actually know if there's a part there, aside from memory. And I'm going to uh, leave the discussion of memory management of where parts are for another time. So for those of you who have seen this, uh, who have seen the last video, this probably looks really familiar. This is just a queuing conveyor system. So whenever there's a part here and there's no part here, the part's going to move from one to two, etc. with the intent of filling up the whole conveyor with as many parts as we have in it, but obviously not crashing. I'm not going to go through all of the logic that runs that. It's virtually unchanged since the last video. So if you're curious, do check out the last video on queuing. What I have changed has to do with this pass-fail station. In a queuing system like this, we want it to keep on queuing forever, except at this station, we don't want it to release a part unless it has a pass or a fail associated with it. And this again could be pass-fail, it could be some MES data, maybe they need to scan a barcode or do something else, whatever the operator needs to do here, they might want a release button. So this is very common. And programming these buttons is going to be a bonus feature of this video because we obviously have to program that for the rest of this to work and to demonstrate the data tracking. So before I get into that, let me just show you what the system looks like. I've added this little text field that tells us what the PLC thinks is at this station. So this is the data tracking that we've added and it's going to contain test information. So if I add a box here, notice that this updates to untested. And as soon as the box transfers, that untested information gets moved with the box. Note, as I said before, this is not gonna be able to go forward until we give it a pass or a fail. Right now it's untested. I'll click on the pass button. It marks that it's pass. And as soon as that box transfers over, so does the data with it. And this data, I'm just keeping track of a integer. You could keep track of a whole data structure if you wanted to, and it would all be the same code, just with a different data type. So let's add another box just to show that one was a pass. We'll make this one a fail, etc. Okay, I'm going to get out of simulation mode just so that the code is a little cleaner to look at. And we'll talk about that before we go back to the simulation. So as before, I've put everything that is intended to be like an input or an output to the PLC in the global variables list. Some of these look really familiar from last time, just the run signal and the part present sensor. And then for conveyor two, I've added inputs for the two buttons and then also outputs. I'm pretending that these are lighted push buttons. And for this kind of system, I would say that's highly desirable to have some kind of light output to tell the operator that this has been marked as pass or fail and it's ready to move on. 
whether that's pass fail or just release, hey, I'm done doing my work at the station, go ahead and queue up down the line. We, we want a, a light so that the operator knows that it is ready to go. This is the conveyor logic from last time. Again, I'm not gonna go through this in great depth, but I'll note that I changed just the loading conveyor three step. So we've got a internal state that moves from two to three, and we don't want that to happen unless data tracking is happy. And we'll go look at that in the new routine that I wrote here. And without further ado, why don't we talk about the new routine then? So first of all, let's talk about these push buttons and lights. If you've seen some of my previous videos, like the one on how to toggle a bit, this probably looks really familiar. We've got two rungs for each push button and light combination. And the idea here is I want to be able to click on this and have it latch itself on. And then I want to be able to turn it off as well with the same button. So if I push on this button once, it should light up, indicating that it's it's marked that unit as a pass and it's ready for the unit to go downstream. And if I change my mind, say I, I realized that I tested that wrong or I accidentally bumped the button, whatever, I should be able to push this again to turn that off so that I can continue doing my work as an operator here until I'm ready for that to go down. So we're just watching the rising edge of that input from the push button. We're turning that into a one shot bit, which just means that it's on for one scan coming around, uh, scanning through the program. And then when it gets back to this point, it turns back off again. So we know any logic down the line here will reference that just one scan. During that one scan, we're gonna say whatever that output for the, for the push button light, whatever that output is, we're gonna do the opposite. And so ignore these middle bits for a second. We're turning on the output for that light. So during that one scan, when the, when the one shot is true, we're gonna make that light whatever the light is not. So if the light is off, we're gonna turn it on. If the light is on, we're gonna turn it off. And then whenever we're not in that one scan, we're not trying to toggle it. That's this rung here, we're not trying to toggle. Then whatever that light is, keep it that same way. So this is the toggle condition. Um, often we see this as like the on condition. In this case, it's the toggle condition. And then this is the latch condition, holds itself as it is. So what's in the middle here? Well, these are all the off conditions. Now, imagine I turned on the pass light and then I changed my mind and I hit the fail button. Well, we probably want that to turn off the pass light. So we'll watch that same one shot here for the, for the fail push button. Whenever the fail push button is pressed, it will turn off this uh, pass light. We also want this to clear when we're done moving a part out of station two, should clear itself, or, or rather when we start moving the part out of station two, because at that point, this should just reset. So as soon as we're loading conveyor two or conveyor three, as soon as something is moving on these conveyors that affects conveyor two, clear that. And we've done the same thing for the fail button as well. They're identical except obviously pass and fail. So once we have that state, well, what do we do with it? We want to know when this station is complete, when that part is ready to move down the line. So up here, I don't think I've used these on this channel before, but we have constants set up here. And this is just a way of me giving a, a text name to an integer so that when I'm assigning integers to all of these things for status, um, I can do that with text. I don't have to remember what number meant what. I don't have to put a comment on it. It's just, it's, it's self-commented code, which is much more readable. And that means it's more maintainable and less likely to have bugs in it. So in this move statement, I can move that constant pass right into the test status, which is just a double integer here. So. If the output is on, we're gonna load pass into conveyor two test status, which is again, that text that shows up here on conveyor two. And we're also going to mark this as complete, which is the thing in the conveyor logic that was telling it it's allowed to move forward. If the fail light is on, same thing, we move fail into conveyor two test status, we mark it complete. And if again, the operator changes their mind, they don't actually wanna pass or fail it, They'll hit that button again, it'll turn off the light, and then neither one of these branches is true, so the rung can't be true. Conveyor two won't be complete and the part cannot move forward. So with all of that taken care of, let's talk about the data itself. This is actually 
quite simple, and I think you'll find that data handling, as, as long as it's you know moving a package of data from one place to the other, is pretty simple. The first and the last stations are obviously going to be a little different. They always are because uh, you know it only has to worry about downstream and not upstream. In this case, I'm watching the sensor for conveyor one part present. When that has a rising edge, then we're going to move untested. Again, that's a constant into conveyor one test status. So you've seen that pop up here. And then when we're transferring from conveyor one to conveyor two, we're watching for the falling edge of our internal state load conveyor two. And that means that load conveyor two is complete. Now, depending on how you're tracking the internal state of moving this across, this might get a little bit weird. For example, what happens if that's moving and a sensor flickers? Could the part be somewhere in the middle? What happens if it's moving and an e-stop is pressed? These are all conditions that you're going to have to consider. There's not a one size fits all. So I'm just assuming that this is going to work. And let, to be honest, in many conveyor systems that are like this, there are a lot of operators around anyway because you use this kind of conveyor when you have operator stations and things nearby. Someone can probably push it back to a certain location and get it to go again. But uh, as programmers, we want to make this as easy as possible for the operators. So when load conveyor 2 is done, the falling edge, the, the negative edge, then we're going to take whatever information was in conveyor 1, we're going to put it into conveyor 2, and we're going to clear out conveyor 1 again. In this case, I'm putting that constant empty into conveyor 1. And by the way, this, this uh, having a constant for empty, sometimes for a complicated, uh, complex data type, a structure, um, having a constant isn't always uh, easy in some platforms. So you could just have a, a tag or a variable that has a bunch of zeros in it. And then rather than clearing out every little piece inside of a structure, you can just move that whole structure right into the status. Anyway, side note. So you'll see the same thing happening in all the other stations until again, we get to the end. So conveyor two to three, when loading conveyor three is done. So at the falling edge of that, we're gonna move two into three, we're gonna move empty into two. Conveyor three to four, same thing. And then when conveyor four goes empty, again, this is, this is the oddball because it's the end. When we see that there's nothing there anymore, nothing at that part present sensor falling edge, then we're just gonna move empty into conveyor four test status. And for this simulation, I'm imagining that an operator puts a part into conveyor one and takes it off of conveyor four just by hand. So now that we've talked through all that, let's just simulate one more time and I'll click on the buttons and we'll watch things move. So for starters here, I'll just clear this back out. I'm gonna look at these buttons first, just because I talked so long about them, even though this is, uh, again, similar code to what we've discussed before. So if I click on pass, let my computer catch up here. There it is. So conveyor two output is on. If I click on fail, we should see, well, we're not gonna see it because it's too fast, but this will interrupt that. And we'll see this blue line turns off. There, that blue light turned off and then the fail light turned on. And I can also just turn the fail light off by hand. I can turn the, the pass light off by clicking on it again. Now, note by doing all of this, I have been assigning you know, test status in here. Maybe that's not what I want. We could decide to also watch this sensor and say, if this sensor is not on, like there's no part present, then this isn't allowed to have any status except for empty. We could do that. I'm not gonna do it here, but that's an option. So, okay, there's our lights. This operation complete again is based on the status of these lights. So if I have a light on, then it's gonna move this status and that bit will be true while my poor computer tries to catch up with this simulation. There we go. And then I can turn it off again, same with fail. So let's watch this one more time and I'll try and give you a view of the code while we're doing it. Oh, that should be pretty good. Okay, so here I'm gonna put something into conveyor one. Notice again that just that rising edge that's gonna pop up whenever my computer catches up will 
set the untested number into conveyor when test status. Sorry, my computer is really chugging today. Okay, let's try that again. Put something in here. Okay, it saw that rising edge. It put untested into conveyor when test status. We can give this uh, pass or fail, and I'm going to move to conveyor two or three so that we can watch this happen. Pass or fail, it will, and the pass follows that box. Yeah, computer's slow today. <laughs> I just closed my browser before this and everything. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this one pass also because I want to show you. So what if we add one more box here? This isn't going to be able to go forward even if I give it a test status, right? So pass or fail doesn't matter. It's not going to go forward because it can't. There's stuff in the way. As an operator, I want to be able to push this button and walk away. I've worked on that part. I've done the test. I'm giving it status. So it should remember that it can go forward. And if I clear a box downstream and this opens up, it will remember and it will go forward because that's how we programmed it. But also as an operator, what if I click pass and then I, I, I decide that was a mistake, I didn't want to do that, I should be able to turn that back off again and do whatever work I'm going to do. So anyway, th those are little quality of life things you want to offer to your operator. We're going to be using this a little more down the line here, mostly for tracking where a part is going to go downstream. So the next thing we'll talk about is branching and merging in conveyors, where conveyors can go from one conveyor to two different or three different possible places and then come back together again later after maybe separate or parallel operations. I hope this was helpful. Leave a uh, comment if you have questions and we'll see you for the next one. Bye. Thank you for amusing my American brother, John. He does so enjoy it when people watch his videos. Be a good chap. Share, like, subscribe and comment. I'm sure he would be ecstatic to hear your impressions. Cheerio.